Ooh, yeah, baby. Say what you want about Starbucks not being like real coffee, but you throw four or five shots in that bad boy and you've got real coffee. So we're gonna have a really great What's Up Wednesday for you guys. I'm like formulating it right now in my brain. So you're gonna have to bear with me. I got a couple of things to do, but then I'm gonna be right back, I swear. Peace out. <laughs> gorgeous day out and um, I don't know what to tell you just go out and enjoy this kind of day but uh, we'll be right back with a little bit more what's up Wednesday Time to get back to work. It's a beautiful Wednesday. Every day's gorgeous around here, right? So we're gonna skate back and uh, start this, start doing what we do. See you soon. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another What's Up Wednesday with your host Ramon here at 321 Kiteboarding. I want to welcome you back to another phenomenal week, and it's the middle of the week. I know it's probably a little bit late or you're viewing this the next day, that's okay. Come back every week, soak up as much as you want, but we're gonna get straight into this. Real quick and easy, we're gonna do, this week is kind of like a tutorials week, so I wanna kind of answer the question that a lot of people have been asking me here in the shop, and that's mainly been what kind of board is gonna work best for me. So we're gonna get into that. Um, we're also going to show you at the end a uh, really quick and easy self-launch routine, so a lot of you that are into kiting, maybe you've just never done a drift launch, maybe you've never done a self-launch, we're gonna show you how to do it really quick. Uh, I'm gonna add like a five seconds of funk at the end so you can get that kiteboarding goodness in right before you go to bed or you go to work. And, uh, and that's it, we're gonna call it a week after that. Come back every week, I do this all the time. All right, so let's get straight into it. Crazy Fly makes some phenomenal boards, but we're gonna go over why you should pick a certain type of board. The boards that we recommend obviously have to do with your riding conditions, your wind conditions, so you, you know, you've got to adopt that to your local scene. But uh, here's the skinny of it. If you're going to be riding in really pumped up, heavy wind conditions all the time, you want one board that's really going to satisfy all those conditions. Back in the day to control the kite, you used to have to get a really small board with narrow tips because you had to dig in and edge hard to control the power. Now with modern kites, you can use that bar to really depower and slow down. So the board doesn't do as much speed control as it used to, so you can go slightly bigger. Uh, for me, the starting, so at 180 pounds, the smallest board I'm probably gonna use is a 137, and I ride right now a 140 in this, or a 139 is a more common size. Performance boards are gonna have more rocker. Rocker is that nice scallop shape when you look at it from the side. The more rocker you have, basically the more control. Then they're also gonna have concave. Woo, yeah, concave is that beautiful design that comes down the bottom and sculpts like this. That's gonna give you better edge to edge or better rail control. Enable you to really bite up wind or really carve super hard and not slide out. You're also gonna see a lot of channeling. In the channels, you're gonna gain momentum and water control. That's gonna enable you to, again, either ride without fins, with small fins, or have much better grip from a given board. That is your performance board. Now, if performance isn't your thing, maybe you're saying, Ramon, I don't really need all that performance. I just want a board that's gonna treat me right all the time. And that's where you're gonna get an all-round type of board. And guess what? They actually call it an all-round. The difference between this and the performance board I showed you is pretty simple. It's gonna have a little less rocker, so it's gonna be a little flatter. 
That's gonna enable you to use a smaller size or the same size and have a little bit better low end so you can go in lighter winds. It's also gonna have very little to no concave. Now this board does have a nice bit of concave added this year, but you'll find that's the same with a lot of boards. They're gonna have a little bit of rocker, a little bit of concave. So you can bring this in waves, you can bring it in chop, you can bring it in flat water. It's gonna do everything for you just about all the time and it's gonna work as a very good average board. But it's just gonna be an all around board that's gonna do everything and it's not gonna sacrifice ride control, ride comfort for performance. You're still gonna get good level performance, good level of ride control and uh, comfort, all right? You might be saying, hey Ramon, I'm not blessed to live in places like the Gorge or South Africa where I have 40 mile an hour winds all the time. What do I do if I live somewhere where it's like 15 miles an hour or below? That's okay, got you covered there. You're gonna want a light wind style board. Now, light wind style boards are also a good choice for your first board. Here's the reason why. Boards like this, this is the same basic board. It's a 145, this one's by 48, so it's super wide. Gives you lots and lots of surface area. That is going to allow you to plane in lighter winds or for heavier riders this is still going to be a shorter board so it's more performance oriented because it retains the same shape as that performance board and the all around board that I showed you earlier. So this is a great starting board if you're going to be in lighter winds or you just need a nice stable platform. All right. If you want a dedicated light wind board you're going to probably look at something like this. This is a 154 by 44 and it has parabolic sides, which just mean they go up and come around. These are boards that are used for light wind riding. They're gonna really get you out in the lightest conditions. They're gonna be great learning platforms that can be used as a light wind board down the road. In higher winds, the extra length and the extra flatness is really gonna cost you some performance and some wind speed, meaning you're not gonna be able to take it up in as high of a wind range as the other boards we've talked about but it's definitely gonna get a lot better low end range. It's gonna get, get you out there riding when nobody else is. These boards, virtually no rocker to them, even though this particular board does have a nice little bit to give you a little bit of performance and not dig you in when there's some chop or if you ride in the ocean, this is actually gonna work for you versus a super flat board. And as far as concave, there might be a little bit, but I can't see any. Doesn't really matter, this thing's meant to plane. That's your light wind board. So stick around for some really nice video on how to do self launches and we will see you guys next week. Oh, yeah, as promised, here's your five seconds of fun.